yeah, getting this thing started, man. How would you describe what exactly it is that you do? You know, all of your work that we see online, what is that all about? Right. That's a really good question. So a lot of the things that I do are in in the pursuit of raising human consciousness, right? From a more idea-based perspective, right? I can give you a whole lot of a lot of ideas of raising consciousness or helping people to become more aware or um, self-actualizing. But when it comes to my actual experience of what I do, uh, which is what I focus on the most is my own awareness of my experience. It's kind of just a rhythm, <laughs> mm -hmm. a flow that comes through me that wants to manifest into the world in the form of videos, right? talking about consciousness or authenticity or personal growth. It's more of like an intelligent force kind of just wanting to make itself known. Yeah, I feel that. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> it's like you get swept away by this force, this higher intelligence, this higher wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I speak to a lot of people and they say the same thing and I feel it as well. It's something that just wants to be shared, man. If you call it the truth, you could call it whatever you want, to be honest with you. But there's something that is a resonance within that you can't help but share, right? It's like almost obligatory. You don't have to do it, but if you didn't do it, it would probably cause you suffering, right? You'd be like, ah, oh, this doesn't feel right. I got to talk about this mm -hmm. somehow, some way. I was going to say that exactly. If I were to not do it, it's like it's so far out of alignment with with my path, with like where my intuition is calling me, that I, I would suffer. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how would you describe what it is that you talk about? What is this essence that wants to be shared? How could we even try to generalize what that is? Mm -hmm. So what I talk about in just like, you know, ordinary you know human terms right i talk about consciousness personal growth healing authenticity and i might start talking about relationships sooner than later um and the essence that wants to come through is it's it's hard to put into words because of course the second i try and box it in it's already wrong <laughs> it's already a limited <laughs> perspective yeah it. we can't help but talk about it, right? There's some kind of irony in there. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's definitely alive. It's intelligent. It's loving. It's aware of itself. It's not really made out of anything. <laughs> it also is what makes everything. Mm. Right? Like in um, Buddhism, they talk about formlessness is form. Form is... The formless, right? Emptiness is full. Fullness is empty. Mm. <laughs> yeah. There's also a popular Buddhist saying, out of emptiness arises compassion. Mm. <laughs> so do you yeah. see that out of that emptiness of mind arises a compassion on video and your work and your coaching and all of your other endeavors? Is there mm. just like a natural effortless compassion that comes from it? Right. The first thing that popped into my mind was Jesus dying on the cross when he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Right. Or even um, there's another good quote by Martin Luther King. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Mm. So what comes through is almost like this radical love of like, mm. it just transcends my my human, right? My, my yeah. and our you know, humanness, our boundaries right it's like <laughs> especially in uh jesus jesus's situation it's such a transcendent love that it's like i don't even care like i i can't help but but love because that's that's how pure for example his being was <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. that's the essence Damn, this is good. We're not even 10 minutes in. We're already at that point, man. <laughs> Getting right into this talk. <laughs> that is the essence, though. It's a higher purpose than the comings and goings of 
the human vessel here. You know, what we are led to believe is important and what we should strive for isn't quite the pinnacle. I'm not negating any of the stuff like money or food or the things we need to do to survive, but that's not the pinnacle. I think what we're talking about here is uh, a higher purpose of living, just a higher purpose of being altogether, you know? And yeah, I feel that. It transcends our life and it gives you more um, comfort, I guess. I don't even know if comfort is the right word, but do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like security within the chaos, but it's ultimately just chaos and uncertainty. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Powerful stuff, man. So um, let me ask you this one. How would you even say one aligns themselves with this wavelength? Where do we even start? Say someone's curious in what we're talking about right now, but they don't even know how to tap in. So how would you say someone starts along this path? Right. Personally, uh, a major component for me, and I can't say this will be absolutely shared between absolutely everyone, but I believe that this is going to be a very core component for almost everyone, is getting in touch with your body. Yeah. Right? Really just grounding yourself in your body and allowing your awareness to kind of just pass through it, right? Shining your conscious attention on your body and allowing it to just relieve itself of tension and stored energy and repressed things because unfortunately our magnificent and intelligent and wise body takes a lot of the beating when it comes to our own unconsciousness when it comes to um, the dictator-like demands of of our mind right of i want to eat this food and um, you know these are my beliefs and i'm like firmly grounded them rigid about them Right? Our, our body takes the toll in the form of stress, tension, repressed energy. And as we bring awareness into our body, uh, a lot of that stuff just naturally starts to dissolve, right? As we can kind of pass awareness through our gut, our head, hands, arms, heart, it opens us up to something uh, beyond our logic, just to something present, something more energetic, something more spontaneous, something more alive. Just the body's always telling you stuff in each moment, right? Yeah. It's the connection to to your relative self as well that <laughs> strengthens the connection to <laughs> your absolute self. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like to say the body is like the in-between of yin and yang. It's the in-between of the ethereal, of the holy, and the material. We are, oh. we are smack dab in the middle. You know, we are the in-between the microcosm and the macrocosm. That is our place here. That is somehow, some way, we, what we are. Somewhere in the middle, you know? <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that. Yeah, thank you, man. And it's almost like energy passes through. Right. I almost see us as a membrane as well. So I feel as though once one does bring awareness to their body and incorporates the right diet, exercise, yoga, meditation, the works, Mm -hmm. they allow that energy, that natural energy to flow through easily so that we become a vessel and an instrument of this divine. We bring the divine, the holiness, the absolute, whatever you want to call it, into the relative as Mm -hmm. a more fluid process. But yes, I I say the same thing too. Step one, you have to become acquainted with your body and allow it to become um, just fluid. I don't know another right. word. Fluid, unburdened and unrigid. Right, yeah. allowing the tens, just allowing the tension to release. Yeah, seriously. Hmm, I agree. Do you ever do asana yoga, hatha yoga? Um, I've experimented with hatha yoga. Yeah. Quite a bit, but not not too much. I don't know enough to really talk too much about Hatha Yoga. <laughs> well, I'd have Experiment. to say, yeah, it's pretty useful. If well, not to everyone. I'm not gonna say everybody, but I would say a good majority of people could benefit from loosening up their body a little bit, mm-hmm. do a little bit of stretching here and there. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it comes in a lot of shapes and sizes. There's a lot of different yogas for one to tap into this. 
you know mm -hmm. the Bhagavad Gita says there's four different yogas so but I think it all encompasses around awareness like you said like bringing your awareness out of the egotistical rituals and mindsets that aren't even yours they come from who knows where but exactly. bring, right <laughs> getting yourself out of that spell bringing awareness to the spell and sort of writing your own script right you bring it back home and then that's when you start to flourish and mm. freely can create but it's all about awareness it's all about getting yourself mm. out of the spell and uh yeah i would say that's step one i would agree i liked how you mentioned um kind of just getting yourself out of the spell and then allowing yourself to create right because a lot of the things that are sort of uh just habitual right they're preventing our our actual development into this right mm. like there's just you know nature develops yeah. over time as well like an oak tree goes from seed to sapling to you know through stages to the fully grown oak tree and humans are like that too when we water ourselves with their own attention you know we develop into you know self-realized beings yeah well said well said it's easy to see in nature in the world this cycle you could say this plan the blueprint and you mm -hmm. describe it very well and we have the audacity to think we're separate from that right in our <laughs> egocentrism we're not part of that that's nature and then there's us no we are a part of that same primordial force that surrounds us yeah yeah and where this is all going like where are we developing into what are we metamorphosizing into really it's hard to say but i do know that there is some sort of metamorphosizing process that we're involved in i don't know if we can mm. like can the can the caterpillar predict that it, it's going to be a butterfly probably not but i do feel as though there is a pull toward becoming a butterfly right like we are right. evolving there's something going on here <laughs> there's something going on here and you said developing i like to say creation right would you say there's right. just a natural inkling of creation that arises out of your being of course yeah yeah i think that's just the that is like the blueprint of the universe that is like the that is like what our endowment that is our godly endowment is the act to create and create our own life and literally create life as well you know we yeah. literally create life that's part of it <laughs> but uh <laughs> but that's anyone can do that but you can create also like your you create your your environment right and you create yep. your like you create your matrix out of that yes. but it's it, it's something that you truly it's like for you right it's like you mm -hmm. you create it for yourself and that's quite beautiful man like animals can't do that right trees mm -hmm. can't do that they're sort of susceptible to their environment and they have to work with it so are we but yet we can mold our environment you know we can we can take advantage of the stuff that we have in our circumstances and mold it to our liking and i think that's something that makes us i don't know if it's better or special but we're like a leap a little bit above animals is where we can we can create amidst the creation we are like additions to the creation itself mm -hmm. and uh yeah where this agree. is all going i don't know yeah. <laughs> go ahead sorry yeah. I, I would say that we have a little bit more freedom than than animals in the sense that we can kind of just be more intentional intention right? I, I yeah say, exactly yeah. that's the word mm -hmm. mm, yeah we can kind of rise above our uh, unconsciousness clean it up and from that point really create consciously and until we get to that point uh <laughs> really like our, our species is <laughs> in many cases sick twisted mm -hmm. unconscious right mm. yeah it's like without awareness uh our species won't really be able to survive almost right it's like it's getting pretty important that we realize our interconnectedness with our environment for example with each other right and this is really like a very fundamental part to you know eliminating all sorts of corruption that exists in the world or war right because it's pretty hard to go to war with someone when you're conscious that <laughs> they're you exactly yeah exactly <laughs> it's that simple <laughs> yeah. 
what a world it would be. I think it's the opposite of the popular paradigm is entropy. And what we're talking about now is whatever the, what is the opposite of entropy? Maybe creation, momentum, you know, whatever we're talking yeah. about now, this wavelength is the total opposite of the popular paradigm. It's, it's fluid. Like we said, there's a sort of flow within it and you are creating to not despite the chaos, not despite the entropy. You're just, it just naturally creates itself. I don't know how to put it, man. Mm. You know, like yeah. the yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> you guys there's say there's a good MC Usher drawing where there's one hand drawing another hand, and they're kind of in this like um, almost like almost yin yang kind of like oh. fashion. Yep. Right where they're kind of all they're just kind of like feeding into each other. Mm. Like a right? toroidal flow, you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's like creation is like this flow, and there's no sort of like small relative creator it's like the creator is the creation you know? <laughs> yeah exactly that's the beauty of it yeah the creator is the creation but then we can also kind of like <laughs> blow our own minds and be like but there still is a relative creator as <laughs> there's still relative truth that's included in the, the creation process as well mm. right it's like the transcending and including of our shared humanity yeah let me ask you this one, man. Mm -hmm. If we are creating something, even though we might not know what it is, what does your intuition say that at a collective level, we are creating all of us that are on this wavelength and will be on this wavelength in the future? Where is this all headed? Would you even be able to explain what kind of world we're creating? What this what what would come from this will on the material plane do you have any inclinations um so an exact prediction i can't really say but i can say that it's in alignment with love yeah and a very deep understanding that just transcends the our own selfishness yeah really right the limitations that we find ourselves habitually stuck in mhm mm it's well said. And that love and understanding will, you know, pour itself into our economy, our day-to-day -day relationships, our connection to nature, our education system, how we go about parenting, right? It's like everything. We have this big picture of love and understanding, right? This, you know, but it it bleeds into all the details <laughs> as well. Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different wavelength. It's a whole different foundation to live mm -hmm. under. Right now, it's competition, you against me, you look different, you sound different, you smell different, you're not me. There's no way I'm going to watch, you know, I'm going to keep my eye on you. With this understanding, a mutual understanding, it's cooperation. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's just a beautiful world, yeah. We don't know really where it's going, but it, it is situated all toward love and it's a corny cliche we've probably all heard it we've definitely all heard it before <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth man it really is the truth you know yeah. somebody's got to say it but this is really where this is all going and that's what life's all about is i think ideally once we get on this wavelength what it looks like in an embodied process from what i feel in myself and what i witness in others in previous sages is just an embodiment of love you become the being of love and jesus was Maybe the number one example of that. It's love <laughs> yeah. and sacrifice despite the suffering, despite the world that maybe doesn't quite understand. You love anyway. You forgive mm -hmm. them for they don't exactly. know. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, man. There's a good book called The Way of the Superior Man by David Data. I don't know if you've heard of it. Have you? I have. I haven't heard of it, though. I mean, I haven't read it. Okay. Okay. So he talks about as um, a masculine oriented being right giving your gifts to the world right kind of sacrificing yourself for the world in the way that like jesus did right that's yeah. kind of like a major yeah. sort of archetype for uh the masculine right and he states like the world will close to you your woman will close to you but regardless you have to live with an open heart right the the masculine <laughs> just like lives with an open heart yeah it's, it's a it gives 
Mm. There's a good Einstein quote as well. The man of value gives more than he receives. Wow. Wow, that's good. Wow, that's so succinct. I like that a lot. Yeah. That paints a different picture than the classical colloquial idea that we have of masculinity. You know, when you look at masculinity in that way, it's it's strength, man. It's honor, it's courage. It's um it's definitely it's it's different. And it paints the p- different picture of love as well. What we think of love in the Disney movies, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like embodying love as a you know, as a masculine figure. It's different. I'm still figuring it out, to be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's different yeah. than, you know, being passive and letting people walk all over you, hug right. everybody you see. It's not that. No, it's not that. It's it's in alignment with truth. Yeah. Because the truth is that <laughs> the universe is love. That my consciousness is an infinitely accepting, loving awareness. Yep. And you can't help but be that. You fight it all you want, but eventually (laughs) the love's going to take over. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. At one point you're going to die and you're going to just go right back to it. And then... (laughs) (laughs) Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, you got to die before you die, as they say in Buddhism. I think that's Mm -hmm. a Buddhist quote. I don't know. It's some quote that I've heard before. You got to die before you die. And Mm -hmm. I think that's the essence of this. All the people that I've spoke to before, a lot of them getting on this wavelength was from, in one way or the other, a near-death experience, like an ego death, right? Something that Mm -hmm. shattered your reality of who you thought you were, and then you come and be reborn in the spirit. Some people actually Mm -hmm. died that I spoke to. Some people had psychedelic experiences, traumatic experiences, death of a loved one, whatever it is. It's just a complete just breaking down of what you thought you were and what the world was and in comes in invokes a love that just comes forth from it you know Uh it's like you can't have anything but that at at, at such a breaking down point like there's got to be another way oh the other way is love obviously yeah you know i love the mentioning of of breaking down because that's like that's perfect that's exactly what it is that's how it was for me and many other people that that I know, right? It's like you wake up, you're like, oh, like I'm in a dream. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like you can't go back now. Uh, there's, there's nowhere to go back to. No it was an illusion. <laughs> there's no going back. Once you take the red pill, you can't go back. <laughs> yeah. Just want one more steak. Just give me the steak. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I was going to ask... Where did this all come from for you? I mean, you don't have to get into it if you don't want to, but if you want to, how would you Mm -hmm. describe how you got on this wavelength in the first place? Uh, In a sense, it was kind of like a lot of people for me, it was suffering. Yeah. So um, I was working. I didn't really like what I was doing. I was confused in my relationships and... I was a teenager still. I was 18 and and I had some pretty good principles established in my life at the time of like health, right? And just kind of taking care of myself, right? And then and then I I read this book called The Tao of Wu because I used to make a lot of music, right? And uh, it was written by the producer of the Wu-Tang Clan, like the 90s hip hop group. Oh, wow where he kind of talked about living in the ghetto, uh, relationships, fame, making music, and he got into spirituality and meditation and all that stuff. And then kind of just kept reading books. I didn't even start really meditating at the time. Um, And then some months later, I said, screw it. I'm going to start meditating, right? I just, I could intuit that I got to do this. And... I remember just sitting down, facing the wall, meditating, right? I didn't even know about Zen at the time or how they would stare at the wall, just sit and face the wall. I just kind of like found myself sitting, staring, like, you know, facing the wall. (laughs) Sometimes it happens. (laughs) Just find yourself staring at the wall. Yeah, man. I feel that. And then I think within a few moments, like I just like, it just clicked that I'm in a dream that like, Mm. It just spontaneously just collapsed 
that like, oh, oh, like what I have been thinking this was is not even close to what I, what, what, what it actually is. Mm -hmm. I was wrong. That's, that was such a core, core thing is I was wrong. I was wrong about what I was and what everything is. I was wrong about everything. <laughs> mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So shout out meditation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's, if one, I was going to say, I think that's number one. I think that is number one for practices. Like you got to meditate, man. You got to meditate. <laughs> I hate to say you have to do anything. Cause you don't have to do anything. That's the weird mm -hmm. thing. You don't have to do anything in, in the absolute sense, mm -hmm. but for lack of a better way to explain it, I feel like I have to say you have to meditate. <laughs> like you, you can't, yeah. you just have to be still at least. Like we said in the beginning, you have to like take a step back to realize that mm -hmm. maybe you're wrong. <laughs> maybe you're wrong <laughs> about how this all goes. And if you're in the wrongness, you're not going to see how wrong it is. So meditation allows one to be able to step back from the wrongness per se and to just mm -hmm. see it for what it is man it's pretty simple i feel like if one does spend enough time with meditation it's pretty apparent to see how wrong all of this is <laughs> it, exactly. it becomes pretty obvious it's like yeah there's something exactly something ain't right here i mean how often <laughs> did you say how often would you say that you meditated you know was it like an everyday thing 10 20 minutes a day so i started with Um, the first time I think I snapped maybe after 45 seconds, I, I wow. just, <laughs> I just was angry. Right. And I intuited that there's so much value to this and that if I can't sit by myself alone in a room and just be okay, there's something like deeply wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, it might be uh, not a nice way to say it, but yeah, I, yeah. I kind of agree. But yeah. to be honest with you, a lot of people don't they don't like that they're a little bit afraid of themselves which i understand you know i'm empathetic but yeah you might you gotta be able to be by yourself man you might have a little bit something wrong not wrong with you but something's not healthy Something yeah is that's like, a better way to say it not yeah. healthy if you can't be by yourself yeah. so yeah very true man mm -hmm. and uh, maybe after about a week i got up to around 15 minutes a day Mm -hmm. And then it hit an hour and then like two hours. And I started doing retreats where I do like eight to 10 hours. And that's really where it got interesting. That's where uh, I started having some really deep awakenings and started just experiencing um, just a lot of transcendent experiences. And even uh, before retreats, I, I had my first breakthrough, like really deep existential non-dual breakthrough maybe a, a year into spirituality and the whole just visual field of separation just collapsed it just stopped happening mm -hmm. <laughs> and um it was it was something <laughs> it definitely it was something. changed a lot or some may say it was nothing yeah. <laughs> depends how you look at it <laughs> yeah I yeah i think in one way, you could say the wrongness or the suffering is actually grace, a lot of sages say, because that's mm -hmm. what gets us on the wavelength of the absolute, of the divinity, of God. That's what mm -hmm. brings us to this. And it's almost like we have to be thankful for it in a certain way, in a certain perspective, because if it wasn't for, because I'm on the same wavelength too, I'm like, there's got to be another way, you know, just... A lot of mental illness and suffering and BS that I went through. And I said, there's got to be another way. I went through meditation like you and I found it. But if it wasn't for the ailments, if it wasn't for the suffering, I don't think I would have been able to even get on the wavelength of this right. divine nature. And that's what makes it a miracle, right? That hallelujah moment is, would it be so, such a miracle and would it be so awe-inspiring if we were never lost in the first place, right? I had that, mm. I was pondering that the other day. I'm like, if we were just born enlightened, which we all are, but if we were just born without getting lost, right? Because that's essentially mm. what happens. We're born pure, enlightened, fully aware, and then we get lost in the sauce. We get conditioned with countless narratives and just, it's just so much, so much. Mm -hmm distortion but would it be so much 
would it be a miracle, as much of a miracle, if you even want to call it that, if we didn't get lost in the first place, right? Is that part of the it, plan? It wouldn't even be fun. Exactly. If, uh, if yeah. we weren't lost. It would be nothing special, right? <laughs> So I think that's all part of it, you know, in a way you got to be thankful for mm -hmm. our, our struggle and our suffering because that is like, that's part, that's the, that's the, the yang to right. the yin, you know, that's the darkness that holds the light. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, we can look at it as like, that's the bad, that's the craziness, that's the chaos. But I think the chaos is what brings us to harmony within. Mm -hmm. It's all I part agree. of it. It's all God. Right. Yeah, exactly. Our, um, our delusion, right? Our self-deception um, is metaphysical, right? It's not just like a silly human deluding itself. It's like this is constructed by the very source of creation yeah. to convince itself that it's not the source of creation. That's how <laughs> that's how yeah. smart the source of creation is. It can delude itself into thinking that it's something other than what it is. Yeah. Uh-huh. Exactly. Oh. Hallelujah. That's all I can say. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, man. <sighs> yeah, I don't even know what to say. I think we figured it out. <laughs> That's it, folks. We figured it out. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I really don't even know what to say. Yeah. I feel as though that miracle, too, like that Hallelujah, our inspiring thing, doesn't just stay at a moment of transcendence in, say, a psychedelic experience or meditation, whatever it is. It's continuing it's ever new the miracle is every day the miracle is every exactly. moment the miracle is now and that is what even that is what even feeds more into the miracle is that it truly is never ends and it just gets more and more novel as time goes on like life just mm -hmm. really gets better contrary to popular belief everyone thinks life is shitty and the world's ending yada yada with this wavelength like i said before it's the opposite of entropy it's the opposite of like you just, nothing changes, but everything changes in how we see it. And that mm -hmm. is priceless. It's truly priceless, man. Like, do you feel that? Like this like an yes. endless miracle? Yes. So in psychology, they mention the sense of awe, right? Uh -huh. And it's almost like you find a sense of awe in the mundane, right? There's the classic, um, talk about it quite a lot in a lot of common spiritual circles, right? The... The mundane and the divine are one. The ordinary is extraordinary, right? And you find just a sense of like pure awe in everyday stuff. A cup, yeah. a pen, dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. 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 Mm. I think that's the path. That's the work. If you want to call it work. Is to be able to have this awe at the dog shit <laughs> and i'm not talking literally <laughs> you see all the dog shit and you're like oh my god you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah everything i meant like can, yeah. i meant like every, like everything that you think shouldn't be awe inspiring i think the work is to be able to see it as awe inspiring like yeah. i think the path of the sage is one that is continually living in this awe inspired embodiment which is essentially love like mm -hmm. we talked about before and I think that's the work here is to be able to refine ourselves enough, refine our rituals, our habits, our whole lifestyle. And I think simplify. I think it comes down to also simplifying one's life so we can easily resonate at that effortlessly. Like Simplify the things that we think are important in our life in order to be able to see the awe in all of this. I think that's the work. That's the path, like the the actual physical embodiment of the path. Would you say um, a great simplification has come from your life since you've had this, you know, yes. enter your being? Yes. There's definitely been like a stripping away of the unnecessary and, and yeah. the fat. Yep. And, <laughs> the fat. <laughs> mm -hmm. and what's kind of left is like the core things that are uh, the most aligned. Yeah. 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 I feel it as takes though... so much. Go ahead, sorry. I was, I was gonna say it just takes so much energy to like feed the things that are just like not not aligned. It's just suffering. Mm -hmm. It's just forces kind of feeding off of my energy, and I'm just like, okay, like I'll just kind of let let that go. Yeah, you feel as though it's intuitive. What is good for you and what isn't good for you? It's completely intuitive. Yep, one hundred percent intuitive. Like something that is 
beyond the thinking mind, something that is more of like a resonance. Exactly. Even with the food I eat, like I can Yep. just put my hand near like an apple or an orange and I can feel that this like is what my body wants. And I can kind of feel the energy that it's almost like emitting. And it's like, this thing is like alive and it's like, it's really good for me. Whereas like putting it next my hand or something next to like a donut, it's just like, ew, <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah. it's like a very organic repulsion from it. Yeah. Right. I mean, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. The donut is, it's like dead. It's been cooked, you know, it's been burnt up. The It's been apple. like engineered to manipulate me, so I Yeah, just exactly. crave it. Yeah, <laughs> like, exactly. ew. <laughs> right. There's nothing of nutrients in a donut. You know, it's just, there's just sugar. That's it. That's it. And an apple, yeah, you feel like it has life. Like there is something in there. It's alive, right? There's, it's, it just came from a tree probably weeks ago. It's like, yeah, you just feel it though. But you don't even have to think about it. We're, we're trying to explain it here. But yeah, you just, if I had a donut in one hand, and I had an apple in the other. There would just be something that would tell me that goes beyond the mind. Obviously, the apple is better for me. Am I always Exactly. going to pick the apple? I don't know. That's the test. <laughs> That's like a metaphor for all of us. <laughs> you know, the devil Yeah. or the angel on your shoulder. That's the that's the refinement that we go through. I feel as though that the universe always throws us those tests, you know, those choices that we have to make. And if one isn't still enough, you know, in the mind, you might pick the donut. <laughs> just one more donut, man. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that, man. Yeah, it's um yeah, it's it's effortless for sure. It's an effortless intuitive guidance. But it doesn't always win. It doesn't always win. That's personally speaking. I don't know, maybe there's some perfect beings out there that they are very pure. They are very sattvic in their action. 100%, you know, maybe that's what this is all about. But maybe also it's okay to honor our um honor our I guess humanness in in what's the word i'm looking for like um i was gonna say honor our hedonism but i don't even know if that's the right word but you know what i'm getting i understand at like yeah honor our instant gratification honor just like even just the parts of us that just want to indulge yeah that's okay too because you can be attached to being too holy and that will cause suffering i feel like sometimes you just gotta eat the donut <laughs> Just there was this one time where I actually had a piece of chocolate cake in my fridge and my intuition was just like eat the cake and I was I was like <laughs> I was like what this is maybe like a year or two ago it's like yeah like eat the cake it's just like the energy is just kind of pulling me to it I'm like all right and then, like I eat it and I feel absolutely fantastic after but yeah it was like a one in like a hundred even less <laughs> kind of moment but um Yeah, there's no need to, like, shame oneself if they want to, like, have a donut or, like, a pretzel or or, or anything, right? It's, it's like, the shaming is, is so unnecessary. Mm -hmm. yeah exactly i mean that's where you get into the idea of some scars and karma like Hmm. these um these tendencies you could say of the ego or things that aren't necessarily good for us many different things on the list but these things that ideally aren't of the sage you could say aren't holy are things that are in our being that you sort of sometimes you have to indulge or like i said it will cause more suffering like there's something inside us i'm not going to try to even explain it but there's something inside us that um wants to just eat the steak one more time like in the matrix you just you just yeah and you kind of have to you know or else you're just gonna always have that in your brain you know like you always if you crave a donut you really want a donut and you resist all the donuts that come to you is it really worth it just eat the donut man you know it's like just just eat it you know and those people say that's from past lifetimes and your karma and who knows where that comes from but i think sometimes it's okay to be a little hedonistic you know you got to find the middle way i feel as though you don't want to be fake holy you know no one likes a fake holy person yeah yeah i don't know <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it's just important to even bring your attention to parts of you that would want to shame yourself for eating a steak or like uh, a donut or a cupcake, right? Yeah. Because uh, especially uh, I'm from Canada, so growing up, growing up here. Um, in school there's definitely a lot of like shaming 
of kids when they don't act in like the the quote unquote right way. And it's like there's punishment. And slowly over time, you kind of develop this habit of like shaming yourself for like doing a bad thing or just kind of having a view that like you're somehow bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just like a subtle thing that it just it just gives us a sense of like unworthiness and yeah it's it's a waste of energy as well that's like mm. really like how how it kind of really just instinctually feels to me it's like even if i were to let's say like eat a steak and even let's say like i just dropped the ball or whatever and now it was like just a terrible idea like what does the shaming afterwards even do <laughs> it's just like energy being burned for for nothing yeah it just constricts us yeah exactly yeah if this whole wavelength that we're speaking on is about liberation, it definitely doesn't feed the liberation if you get mm -hmm. caught in guilt. I think a, a big part of this whole journey is forgiveness. Forgiving yourself, admitting you have faults, we are a faulty human being, that's actually, mm -hmm. that's okay, that's the good news actually, um, and forgiving others. Yeah, we're all faulty human beings as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing is we'll honor our humanness as well. Honor the faults. We are an imperfect being. And that's okay. That's the good news. Like I said, that's, that's okay. <laughs> you know, that's like, there's so much freedom in that admitting that. Hmm. It's, it's, it's hard to explain in the beginning. We're talking about like this holy transcendence, ascension, talk, you know, love, kumbaya, and that 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 is true, but the other part of our being is animal, you know? selfishness, bias, yeah. delusion, the devil. Yeah, we got both all this in us. Kind of stuff. We got both. And I think and, we talked about that, yeah. right? We talked about the yin and the yang. We got both mm -hmm. in our beings. You know, mm -hmm. we got the light and we also have the dark. You got to honor both. You know, mm -hmm. you have to honor both. Right, and the transcendent love that we talked about doesn't have a bias or a preference towards any single one because it is yeah. all of them so it's like bringing that kind of love to the parts of you that you want to avoid or hate or deny or repress is how to actually <laughs> heal them mm -hmm. and to, to just kind of yeah just exist in a more harmonious way with them as well i agree yeah and to just be simply joyful man to actually be happy, if you even want to say happy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a path of least resistance, we could say. Path of yeah. least resistance. And we build up all the resistance ourselves, right? It's, yeah, it gets stored in us. It's, I think it causes disease. Like you can kind yeah. of feel it in the body. It's, it's a sickness. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Yeah, the body is a reflection, I feel, of that. Yeah, I feel as though a lot of these diseases, like serious terminal diseases, come from years and years and years of just stagnant energy, stagnant just lifestyle. That resistance builds up and it does yeah. become a cancer to our body, yeah. you know? It's um it's true. It's very true, man. Um jeez, this is good. Do you have uh any other recommendations on how to or line ourself with this this wavelength we're talking about, you know, this idea of liberation. Do you uh, recommend anything? I don't even know if we talked about it already, but for your diet, um, maybe books. You got a lot of books. I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know if you want to name off all those <laughs> books, but I don't know. Teachers in general, yeah. uh, practices. I'll yeah. share. I'll share a lot. So of course, the most important thing is looking at your own personal value system. Do you really want truth? Like, can you really wholeheartedly say, I I want the truth. Mm. I want to awaken to it. And if it's a no, that's okay. You No one actually has to. Mm. Right? But if, if you want to, right, then that value, and if it's a very sincere one, that'll already take you the entire way. Right? There's going to be some errors, of course. Of course, more guidance is very helpful than just that but if you really at the core of your being have a deep desire for truth 
it, it will take you the entire way, right? And then even in terms of diet, um, eating just foods that are like alive, high in energy, foods that make you feel light, clear, foods that nourish your body and heal it, right? Eating for the body rather than for avoidance or simply pleasure, which yeah. there's nothing wrong with, you know, when that happens. But it's it's just a matter of, you know, slowly over time allowing it to like really align in you in the way that it wants to. Mm -hmm. Another core point is just meditation retreats. <laughs> just sitting there for 10 hours a day for days on end, really examining direct experience. Nowhere to hide, nowhere to run. Just you and awareness <laughs> until it's just awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So honor the body, take care of the body. Honor the mind. And also be still enough. Mm -hmm. I can mention some teachers who, who influenced yeah. me quite a lot. Please. So in terms of, I guess, just very, uh, just like non-duality teachers, Adyashanti, for sure. Uh, a guy named Peter Ralston as well. Um, Peter Ralston Ken Wilber. pretty serious. Peter Ralston, I good. know. <laughs> I love Ken Wilber. <laughs> Leo Gura as well. David Data. Um, who I even got here? I got so many. Uh, I think I'll just leave it at at, at those four. Yeah, those are some heavyweights. Sure. Yeah. Modern heavyweights as well. Those are all guys that are still around. Yeah, they're all alive still. Mm. You know, it's wondrous that we live in a time where we have resources like that to guide us. We yeah. have so much, so much at our disposal. There's no excuses anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I know. That's, that's it. It's free or it's very cheap. Exactly. Yeah, and we, we can access it like this. Yeah. It's in our pockets at all times. We have people that are living today, like you, like Peter Ralston, and um, you know the names that you listed, many others, and then people of the past also that decided to leave their imprint of the Dharma to us. It's all available, you know, the Gita, the Upanishads, Buddhas, Sutras, Ramana Maharshi, the Sarjadatta. Yeah, there's, there's yeah. more. Just there's so much. There's so much. <laughs> it's been around forever. Yeah, <laughs> we would have been lucky to have been in the presence or to have one of those teachers in our life, say a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago, and now we have a buffet of awakened mm -hmm. guidance. <laughs> there's truly no excuse, man. Yeah. Like if one really does say want the truth, they want to know. You can you can know. <laughs> there you can know just like that. There's um you don't need the guidance, that's the thing. You don't need the teachers per se. You really don't need anybody. It's really a solo journey. But mm -hmm. guidance helps a lot for sure. A lot. It helps a lot. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimately, though, I say all guidance brings you back to you. You know, any valid mm -hmm. teaching is a teaching that brings you back home to yourself. If it's not, then I don't think it's I don't know useful. what they're teaching. Yeah, <laughs> it's just baloney. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But there are a lot of valid teachers, very great teachers that we have access to. Some of them literally you could speak to like you on one on one. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of them you can you can give your input and then they give their input to your personal journey that is also another miracle <laughs> imagine being being able to get ramana maharshi on a zoom call <laughs> like come on <laughs> you know what i'm saying miraculous live from times. The cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah live from the cave on zoom it's crazy like i just it's truly it's truly special times that we're in i think this is the lifetime if we lived and i don't know who knows nobody knows but if we have lived multiple lifetimes as they say in eastern philosophies and we've been doing this for millions of years billions of years this is the one <laughs> this is the one it's all been leading to this lifetime for you to awaken 
oh, they got stuck on the Instagram reels. They'll be there for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's the thing too, is that we can easily, just as easily as we have, we can access the guidance, we can access yeah. the ignorance as well. So close. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's using the same exact tools. Yeah. yeah. That's a good point. Is Still, the journey is always about us and, the, and how we want to utilize all of the tools at our disposal. It ultimately comes back to us and what you really want what does your heart really desire not your mind desire not the ego desire what does your heart really desire i feel like that's worth exploring you know that's worth exactly. examining and that like you yeah. said will lead the way it'll just naturally lead the way if you really yeah. resonate with that desire if you want to call it a desire then it will lead the way and you won't get stuck on tiktok or instagram reels <laughs> maybe you will here and there but you'll realize that it's you know how many times because i do too i get stuck on tiktok or bs like that and i'm just yeah. like what oh my God. yeah what am i doing yeah. man it's just um it's yeah it's it's easy to um so it's easy to what's the word i'm looking for it's easy to get sucked into it but it's also easy to see through it as well see through yeah. the illusion with this resonance yeah exactly and it's kind of just allowing yourself to even jump into it and then to just like jump out of it. Yeah. So, yeah. That's getting back to the forgiveness aspect too. Forgive yourself yeah. for going on TikTok. It's okay. Just not too much. <laughs> not too much. You got to yeah. find the balance, man. I think that's what it is. Is our world is very imbalanced. We're we're very caught in the the drama, you could say, the the illusion of maya. And that's okay. The illusion of maya is actually a good thing. I don't know if well, I don't know mm -hmm. if you want to say good, but it was it's part of the creation as well. We just have yeah. to not think that the illusion of Maya is the pinnacle. I think we kind of touched upon this in the beginning. Maya, the world, is not, it's not, it's not really what's going on. Everyone thinks like what's going right. on is like politics and the, all the countless narratives, the stories that we see it's on Twitter. Close. That's not really what's going on. It's cool. Mm -hmm. You can entertain it. You know, you could see it just as like another movie, I guess. Yeah, but the point yeah. is detachment, right? Detachment mm -hmm. from all of that. Like, oh, that's, that's just is another part of the show, right? That's how I see it, at least. I'm like, oh, exactly. the, sh the show goes on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Detachment. Right, we we kind of just get caught up in like momentary things when there's just like simultaneously like a long-term unfolding, but also an immediate <laughs> unfolding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just both happening simultaneously. The simultaneous arising. Mm -hmm. <sighs> but the thing is, once you see through it, you it's like once you peek behind the curtain, you see Oz, you, you always know Oz is there mm -hmm. <laughs> you always know once you take the red pill i think again like we said in the beginning you don't go back you don't go back yeah. into the matrix the same at least you can go back into the matrix but it's not the same it would be hard yeah because <laughs> <laughs> slowly like we're all just finding our way towards towards who and what we really are mm -hmm. right and uh you know people have different paths and Ultimately, they're all kind of just leading to the same, in a sense, the same place, maybe yeah. different facets of the same place. I like to think of it kind of like a diamond. It's got, you know, a diamond has different facets. You can look at one facet, it's empty. Another facet, it's full. Another mm. facet, it's conscious. Another one, it's love. Another one, it's truth. Right? Yeah. Good and way even, to put it. Uh, yeah, different religions will emphasize different facets yeah. as well. Like Very Buddhism true. emphasizes no self and emptiness quite a lot. Hinduism mm -hmm. will emphasize the true self. Yeah. Jesus emphasizes love. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's two sides of the same coin or different facets of the same diamond. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very true. We're all walking each other home, as Ram Das would say. Yeah. That's the beauty in it, though, is we all become our own Buddha. You know, we all become our own sage. If you see the Buddha on the road, kill him. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> the final obstacle is that there's any Buddhas. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's there's no sage to look up to. There's no teacher. There's no guru. It's just you waking up to yourself. You've been the Buddha the whole yep. time. Yep, we're all the Buddha. That's the thing. We're all the Buddha. <laughs> so if we're all the Buddha, that's then it's like, well, okay, then no one's the Buddha. <laughs> like we're all equally the buddha 
So that means nobody's <gasps> really let it special. go. Yeah, it's like then it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <sighs> they say that in Buddhism, the last thing that you let go of is the Dharma, is all the teachings. You still revere them, but you let go of you just let go of the yeah. Dharma. I'm not gonna try to like put it in my own way or paraphrase it. They say the last attachment is to the Dharma. And I think that's yeah. what you're alluding to. It's the last things you let go of is the idea of like an attainment, right? Like the, the like you gotta do something, you gotta be somebody, be somewhere. It's like no. Slow letting down. go of consciousness. Yeah. Letting go of awareness, letting go of non duality, letting yeah. go of separation or oneness or the whole thing, because it's just the spiritual paradigm is just another paradigm. It's another set of constructions exactly. that we use to break out of the matrix. But once you're out of the matrix, you don't need the thing that you use to break out of the matrix anymore. You're free. You can let, <laughs> let it go. <laughs> well said. Yeah, very well said, man. Yep. It's the last attachment. You got to let go of letting go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. Well said. Hey, man, you know what? I think that's a good note to wrap this up at. Like, what more do we have to say after that? <laughs> what more can I say? Um, yeah. Do you have anything else you want to say, though? Um, not really. I just, I'm really grateful to even be here and be able to discuss these, you know, kinds of topics with you. Same. I'm grateful yeah. as well for you coming on here. It's truly an honor to have you on here. And I'm not just saying that I doing this yeah. is like this is my side enough <laughs> this is truly like this is wondrous for me this that i'm able to do this and tap in with people like you so uh -huh. i bow to you i thank you for coming on here man thank seriously you. and keep doing your thing you know i can tell you have um an understanding and a realization that shines through so keep doing your thing i wish you all the best thank you man you too peace and love to you and peace and love mm -hmm. to everybody that listens to the song mm -hmm. see ya <laughs>